Hello, my friends. This is Ellis Paul. We're doing a live stream here tonight, the Travel and Medicine Show. We're doing it on a Wednesday night because I'm leaving this weekend for my first uh, shows in six weeks. I can't believe it. It's going to be fun to be on the road again. Thought I'd get a live stream in really quickly. We're going to start in about five minutes. I'm going to play a little song in the background. This is a song that I haven't released yet. It's called A Life Well Lived. If you're on Patreon, you might have a copy of this already because I've sent it out to Patreon folks. I wrote this with Abby Gardner. It's what's going on in the background. We're going to start in about five minutes. I'm going to go turn on the Instagram show. What is life? All right. Okay, it looks like we're hitting it on over there on Instagram as well. Let me know where you guys are from and where you're listening from. Michael Doherty is out there in Los Angeles. So glad you're hitting the road again. Thank you, man. I can't wait to get back to L.A. and play some more shows. Hope we bump into each other while I'm there. We're going to start in about five minutes. You might notice someone in the background. That is my sister. Did you know today is National Sibling Day? I had her flown in. She jumped out of an airplane right above our house. And uh, here she is. Who knew? We have to think of good family songs. We just found out it was National Siblings Day, like literally 30 seconds ago. Karen is here. Nice to see you, Karen. She runs the home office. I don't know what I'm going to play tonight, but... And our friend Dan is watching from Redditch, England. Dan, thank you. So sorry I missed our big moment. We'll make sure we do it, though, this time around, okay? Hang in there. We're going to start in about five minutes. It's It must be like one o'clock in, in England. What time is it there, Dan? Karen says hi to Bethany. Dan set his alarm to join us tonight. Just coming up on 1 a.m. in England. Getting the guitars ready. We're going to start in just about three minutes. <laughs> Bob Seifert is here. Seifert, isn't it? I've already forgotten, Bob. Nice to see you, man. Good to have you here. Yeah, it's like I want to grow my hair out, but I'm going to get it cut soon. This is about as long as it's been in, in a long time. But my partner thinks I should go get a haircut, and I think she's right. It's, it's right at a, that time. All right, I'll just turn that version of the song off. And I think we're about ready to go, guys. Barb Emerson is here from Maine. Gail Scott down in Miami. Uh, and Karen says, from the back, you look like Gordon Lightfoot. From the front, I look like Michael Jackson. No, probably not. All right, let's start the show, shall we? We've got the old intro that I worked so hard on so many years ago. We gotta probably update all of this stuff. It's probably kind of time, right? All right, at eight o'clock, here we go. Hello, Hello, my 
friends, we haven't seen that intro for quite a while. I'm Ellis Paul. We are in uh, Crozet, Virginia, right at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, snuggled right against the beautiful Blue Ridge. And uh, I've been told, we found this out just seconds before the show started, that today is National Siblings Day. And my sister is lurking in the back in silhouette, about to murder me. <laughs> she's waving. That's my sister, Bethany, and um, she is visiting today, and she's uh, the only real musician in the room, actually. She's getting her PhD in a couple weeks, and we're thrilled about that in Coral. I guess, what is the official Coral name? Coral Conducting. Coral Conducting. So she's going to be, if any of you have an open spot at a university or any kind of school, uh, culinary school <laughs> anyone that needs a choral director she's your gal and uh, she's uh, graduating from the University of Kentucky in Lexington Kentucky and uh, so she's gonna have a PhD she's the only well I, I guess I have one too did you know that Mine is a DMA. what is that a doctor of musical. she's a doctor of musical something I'm gonna have I'm gonna bring her up in a second <clears throat> And we're going to talk about her PhD and how, how she suffered to get it and how I got one handed to me uh, in the arts. Isn't that funny? This won't be too long of a show. I'm doing it mostly for our friend Dan in, uh, in England. And Dan, I'm going to do your song next. This is a John Pine song. I am an old woman named after my mother. My old man is another child who's grown old. It dreams were lightning. Thunder to Zion His old house would have burned down A long time ago Make me an angel That flies from Montgomery Make me a poster An old rodeo Just give me the one that I can hold on to To believe in this living Is just a hard way to go When I was a young girl Oh, I had me a cowboy He weren't much to look at Just a free round That was a long time And no matter how I tried All the years they flow by Like a broken down man Make me an angel That flies from Montgomery Make me a poster Of an old rodeo just give me the one thing that I can hold on to To believe in this living is just a hard way to go There's flies in the kitchen I can't hear them buzzing And I ain't done nothing Since I woke up today How the hell can a person Go to work in the morning Come home in the evening With nothing to 
stay Make me an angel That flies from Montgomery Make me a poster Of that old rodeo Just give me the one thing That I can hold on to To believe in this living is just a hard way to go To believe in this living Is just a hard way to go Ending with a ninth chord You probably knew that was a ninth chord Nice if you're just joining us, my name is Ellis Paul. I'm sitting here in the foreground. In the background is my sister, Bethany. Our sister, Rebecca, is saying, Happy Sibling Day. Go, Bethany. I guess I, I'm, I'm a sibling, too. She didn't mention me at all. What about go, Paul? How about that? I am very, very happy, Bob Seifert says. You look so happy to be playing guitar so freely again. I am thrilled. This is what my hand looks like. There's still a bend in the pinky, but my pinky was stuck to my palm, so it was like this. And, um, and now I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit more. If I can get that bent back close to that, I will be very, very happy. Right now, it's, I'm finally able to tuck it out of the way and... Um, so yes, it's, it's nice and I'm able to do all sorts of things like clap, which I haven't been able to do, um, caress my friends' backs, and, and uh, that's a thrill. Um, and before long, I'm going to uh, bring Beth on camera here and we can sit and say hello to you folks side by side. But I know it's one o'clock in, in England and my friend Dan is watching. He wanted to hear a song of mine called conversation with a ghost so I'm going to play that for him and hopefully he's still awake the weird thing about this song is it's based on a true story um, and I'm very cryptic in the song itself because um, I didn't want to weird anyone out and so I I made the details fairly vague in the song and maybe they're a little bit universal because of that uh, uh, because I didn't tell the story directly the story is a ghost story not everyone believes in ghosts but I do the story starts in Boston Massachusetts I was running around Jamaica Pond with my great friend Vance Gilbert and he invited me that night to come over to his place for a party that he was having. A dinner party with his girlfriend Margaret and I brought my girlfriend Emily over and we arrived and I walked up to the kitchen. Margaret was there cutting carrots into a sink and I said, how you doing? What's new with you? I haven't seen you in ages. And Margaret said to me, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. And I said, well, give me a chance. At least tell me what's going on. And she said, well, a few weeks ago, I went to a garage sale with my friend Beth, who was also at the party, by the way. Not the Beth in the background, but another Beth. And she said, I bought a Ouija board for a dollar at this garage sale. And every night, Beth and I have been on that, talking to a ghost whose name was Margaret Putnam. She goes by the nickname Pub, which is a lot easier to spell on a Ouija board. And I said, you're kidding me. She's talking to you, like giving responses, like fax machines? And she said, yeah, yeah, we have these conversations and she knows things about us that we obviously wouldn't have told her. And she's spelling them back to us. And I said, I don't believe you. Let's, let's pull it out tonight. Can we do that? And she said, sure. We'll do it. 
Beth's here. We'll get on either side of, of the little triangle that floats across the Ouija board, and we'll give this thing a, a test run in front of all of us. So all of us, after the dinner, walked into the living room, formed a semicircle, and Beth was on one side of the board, and Margaret was on the other, and I was the designated question asker. The first question I asked, what was the last song of the show I did last night? Neither woman at the board was there, but they asked Pug, okay, what was Ellis Paul's encore song last night at the show he did at the Old Vienna Coffee House in Westboro, Mass? And the board spelled R, A, I N. And sure enough, the song that I had played to end my show was a song called Let It Rain. And of course, it wasn't the complete title. And of course, many, many songs have the word rain in the title. But there it was. And I was thinking, wow, that was a pretty good guess on the lady's part. So I asked Pug through the ladies again. Who booked the show? A little more difficult to guess, right? It's spelled out G-E-R-M-A-N-E. And oddly enough, the woman who booked that show for me was named Sarah Germain. But there was a misspelling. It's M-A-I-N, not M-A-N-E. And of course, there's no spell check on a Ouija board. So that little tiny flaw in it made me doubt it just enough to still not believe. So I asked another question to Pug. I said, what did I have to drink with fans before we came to the party tonight? Board spelled N O G. And sure enough, Vance and I had two glasses of eggnog before the dinner party. And I ran up and locked myself in the bathroom. I closed and locked the door. I was freaked out, but eventually I decided to come out again. And my girlfriend Emily was there. Her sister had recently passed away, and we asked Pug. If Allison was there, Allison was an important person to me. She gave me my first guitar. The pug said yes. And then we asked Pug if Allison had a message for Emily from the other side. And the board spelled out L O V. Everyone was just kind of too emotional and we had to put the board away. We're all kind of freaked out, Emily and I and Margaret and Beth on the other side of the board and Vance in the background and the other dozen people that were in the room witnessing, by the way, everything that was going on. Well, you think that would be a nice ending to the story, but it's not. About three years later, I'm playing a show in Middleborough, Massachusetts, like many folk venues, it's a great place to play, but it's also an antique shop. And downstairs in the basement of the place, I look to my right and on the shelf, there is a directory for the city of Boston from 1865. Now from my recollection of what Pug had told Margaret in the beginning days, was that she lived in Boston she was a nurse in 1865 and had married a doctor and she lived on Commonwealth Avenue and I thought to myself holy shit I could look up Pug in this directory of Boston from 1865 it's like the proof is right here so I grabbed the piece they were broken into three different books to the peas and I there are hundreds of them and I scanned through for Margaret Putnam and I couldn't find her and 
then it hit me, well, it wouldn't have been under her name. Women weren't given that kind of respect back then. It would have been under Dr. Putman. So I went back and I scanned my finger going down the page through all the P's of Putman until it landed on Dr. George Putnam, Commonwealth Avenue. And that's when I really freaked out. This song is written after that whole thing. It's about a discussion really between Emily's sister Allison and Emily. It's called Conversation with a Ghost. This goes out to my friend Dan. I hope it helps heal up any wounds you have, brother. This song really means a lot to me because it was the first song that I wrote that got a lot of airplay in Boston. I'll respond to you in letters I'm sorry so slow Sorry so few In a nutshell I'm much better So far the complaints I hear are few So how have you been? Have you been to the races? Did you take my mother? Is your sister in braces? Wish I could have been there to see you through Hear all those things you told me Do you remember that time? It was cold in the park. You were running a race. I was there on a lark. Who would have thought that New York could be such a small town? How have you been? Have you been to the races? Did you take my mother as your sister in braces? Wish I could have been there. To see you through Hear all those things You told me once Let her get some sleep She's bored with these letters That are count her sheep So goodbye love Goodbye love How have you been? Have you been to the races? Did you take my mother? Is your sister in braces? Wish I could have been with the ghost uh, Bob's leaving a nice note here about that um, he's hearing Patty Griffin's harmonies on the background yeah Patty I mean everything she touches is gold um, I think that's had a lot to do with the song success she sang on the choruses and um, you know just brought that feminine tone to the song and um, all the magic of her of her voice I'm, I'm still planning on doing videos for my back catalog uh, that certainly will be 
one, I need to do one for 3,000 miles in Maria's beautiful mess, and uh, maybe to Galileo pray. I've been talking with a friend of mine, a couple friends of mine actually, Sam and Tall, about AI and how it's changing um, things just incrementally right now, but soon it's gonna change everything. And um, we were plugging in song ideas into um, an app called Suno, and we put in Alice's Champagne Palace, done with a country pop, folk country pop style. And the song that it spat out was, was pretty great, sadly. And um, with a, a great voice singing it, it was obviously a computerized invention of a voice. But um, I decided tonight uh, that I'm going to do a special show on AI in music and the arts um, in one of these trends, uh, one of these shows here, um, uh, traveling medicine shows, and um, probably in May or June. Um, we're also going to do a John Prine show. I know I've been talking about that, a John Prine tribute show. Um, so I'll, I'll set it up, we'll put it on the calendar so it's in stone, and um, we'll have a special guest and we'll sit and we'll talk about AI and the consequences of it and what, what it's going to be bringing to the arts. And um, hey, I wanted to bring my sister. You want to come up and say hello? Come, come grab a chair. It's National Siblings Day, y'all. And this is my sister, Bethany. Grab that chair there, hon. Say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Beth, just luckily for, for Laurie and I, Beth's um, finishing her, her PhD, and, and um, the gentleman that it's focusing around was doing a, a weekend here of sort of... He's uh, doing a residency at the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. I'll just give you a little boost there. All right. So the University of Virginia is right here in Charlottesville. <laughs> and uh, so... What's, what's his name? Eric Eschenbaltz. He's Latvian. He's Latvian. That's, so she's doing her, her PhD on a guy named Eric Letzenvoltz. Eschenbaltz. That's what I said. Yep. Eschenvoltz. <laughs> Eckenvolkervoltz. And uh, do you have, when you're writing um, your th thesis and your, your PhD paper on, on this guy, do you actually have a pronunciation like how to say his name no. after you write it? No. You're not supposed to do that. No, no, I don't have to do that. Yeah. So it might be useful. I can't read it then. <laughs> <'Cause I'm, laughs> I mean, I, if I can't say Leschenfarts. <laughs> what's his name again? Eschenvaults. E Eschenvaults. Yeah, oh, there you go. Did I get it? Yeah. Eschenvaults. There you go. It's like Escher, the artist, uh, vaulting, Luca Jumper. Uh, so Eschenvaults. Yeah. That's how. No, I'll get it right every time. And um, so he's Latvian. Yeah, he's a Latvian composer, and he's written a lot of choral music with texts by Sarah Teasdale, who's an he, American poet. He uses a poet to write the lyrics. Uh, uh, Sharon, Sharon, what's her name? Sarah Teasdale. Sher, Sh, Sarah Teasdale. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah. So it's kind of like Elton John and Bernie Toppin. It's like Sarah just drops some lyrics on his lap, and then he... He starts jamming and creates uh, choral pieces. To Sarah Teasdale is the first person to win a Pulitzer Prize in poetry. Is she really? Yeah, it was the the very first. The very first in 1918. She, wow. She so it. she can't even complain about how her music's being used or how her lyrics are being used. And she was actually considered herself a lyricist. So they call her poems. She often called them songs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, but nothing has ever been done with her lyrics before. Oh, like, no, there are other composers who have set her lyrics before oh, okay. her, her music, but he's Latvian and, you know, was raised, he's 47, 48, and grew up in Cold War. Still kind of young. Latvia, yeah, he's younger than I am, so, and... Uh, he's younger have, than you? Yeah, he's wow. younger than I am, younger than you, too. Wow. So, and uh, they didn't have any books of Ter Sarah Teasdale's poetry in Latvia, so it's kind of interesting that he ended up setting so much of her music, so he's written 20 pieces. And how did he discover her, her lyrics? Google. He, <laughs> he Googled them. He Googled them. Now, if I was going to go into AI, and maybe we'll do this tomorrow, Beth and I, and I put um, uh, Sarah Teasdale mm -hmm. uh, um, lyrics into an AI 
composing machine and spat out a chorale uh, based on her lyrics. How would um, you feel about that? Be interesting to see what right. happens. Yeah. So. And then you could like record what, what the computer creates and then you could bring it to Eric tomorrow and say, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, can you believe this? And I think that's Mariah Carey's voice singing it. <laughs> so with, with the Mormon Tabernacle choir in the background. You tell him he had an interest in uh, electric music, I could tell him. Oh, know, did he really? But it was creative. Oh, so electronic he's... Electronic music, so... So he may embrace AI. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right, you can't speak for him, but... Yeah, I, it's hard um, to imagine very many artists embracing AI. No, it's going to suck. Yeah. Look, it, it, it's not, it, it's going to be a tool, of course, but tools in the past don't do the creating. They're just used to do the creating. And this is, um, this new version of a tool is going to do all of the heavy lifting. I can plug in to a computer, um, again, like any fictional thing, like um, write a song about two siblings hanging out drinking wine over the fire. And... <laughs> And it'll spit something out melodically, and you can say in the style of uh, soft jazz, and it will do a fairly decent version of that, like one that would only require really subtle ed editing, and um, and that's just now, ten years from now, it's going to be very very profound what what it can do, and um, it's a little scary. Yeah, yeah, it's a little scary. Barbara Emerson says, fun to see you with your sister. Was she there for the fire? They oh. were drinking wine with fire. Oh, yes. They don't have a fire. No, she's, I think she's referring to the fire in Maine. Was she there yeah. for the fire? I was at that event. Yeah, yes. I was, quite. Literally, but you literally were young. Did. I you, was like four or five. No, six. I was 14, so you would have been six. Six, yeah. Yeah, because I'm eight years older than yeah. you. Yeah. Do you remember it? Seven years and eleven months. Yeah. There was a fire at our grand, our, our grandparents' home, um, and I wrote a song called Five Alarm Fire" on the Fourth of July about it. And uh, gosh, I don't know if I could play that without rehearsing it because it's been many months since I played it. But yeah, it's cool. I'll show you a picture um, of the fire. And uh, by the way, thank you so much for the tips in the tip jar, um, Dan. Thank you so much for that. And, and Clarence, uh, thank you as well. Thank you guys for the love and the tip chart. You keep me going, and um, I'm grateful. Uh, open camera. I'm going to show you a photograph of the fire that day. Um, have you seen these photos? I've seen one of them. I've seen the video. Are they the ones you used in the video? Yeah, I did a video of it and, and used, um, so here's a picture of the fire with my dad and I. I don't know if I can get that light out of there, but um, that's, my dad is um, the guy in the hat, and that's me at 14. And that's what you call wishful thinking. <laughs> Those are saucepans. We were literally throwing <laughs> saucepans of water at it. And this is what it looked like from, from a distance. Uh, same shot. Yeah, this, um, it was a memorable day for me. Um, this is. Gosh, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's cool. And for the video, I think I ended up animating the flames so that yeah. the flames were lifting off. Um, but that was the old farms, farmstead. Nice to see all of you guys here. Uh, Caitlin, nice to see you. And thank you for the gift, by the way. I've been using them frequently and, and uh, very, very happy. Um, and there's a little tip information there for y'all if you're interested. Thank you very much. Um, Craig Ossie says hello to you. Barbara says hello to you. Karen says hello to you. Everybody's hello, saying Craig. hello. Hello, Karen. Yeah. Um, Let's uh, let's do more music. Is there something that you could sing with me that no, I don't know. we didn't if rehearse? You do something I could fake harmony in mm. the background. 
Just wondering, like, a pop song that maybe we could do. Like a famous song, not, not like a Mariah like Carey. <laughs> no, not like ABBA. I mean, I wouldn't mind it if we rehearsed. Uh, something easy like a Dylan song or... Um... Yeah, do your songs. Oh, my songs. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Let's do one of mine. Uh... Oh, Jess says do the world ain't slowing down. Why not? We'll do that for Jess. I think I might have done this last, last week. Um, by the way, I got a new guitar. We decided to name it Denver. Uh, speaking of John Denver, it's a 12 string, acoustic 12 string. And it actually is totally affordable, just $400. Does, right? Yeah. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. Country roads. That was completely me, but there was an AI version of Beth. That's why she was off camera. <laughs> Let's do the world ain't slowing down. Would you know that, Beth? You know the words to that? Sure. Yeah, you can come in here. Just I've got plenty of room. Yeah, it's not a bad sounding uh, guitar for the amount I spent on it. And I just need something in my studio to dress up um, some of the recordings. And, and that just will make a, one guitar sound like 100 guitars. This is a high strung guitar. I call it Lucy. I named it after Lucille Ball. It's got my name on the headstock. And it's a high-strung guitar. These were invented uh, after the 12-strings were invented because they mimic the high strings on a 12-string guitar. There's six high strings and six kind of standard strings on this. And if you, if you um, took away all of the standard strings on a 12-string, you would have something like a high string. And my favorite thing about this is that um, on a high string, the, the G string is, instead of, it normally would be the E string, but the G string is the highest string on the neck. So it inverts the picking patterns so that the high, the high note appears in the middle of the pattern. That note falls in a funny place. And when your ears are used to it falling, falling in another spot, it just, it's, it's like music to me. So I have now almost every guitar uh, you could imagine in my arsenal. I've got a six string, high strung guitar. I've got a 12 string. I've got two electric guitars. I've got a banjo there lit, lit, lit up in the background. It's a banjo guitar, which is a, a mix between a guitar and a banjo. And I own two of those. One is kind of plucky, that's that one. It's, it's almost like a toy guitar. And, uh, and the banjo guitar upstairs, it's very loud and brash. And then I have um, 
down here I have three acoustic guitars. They're sort of the three bears of acoustic guitars. There's a, a mid-level, mid-sized guitar. That's Maggie. And a giant Papa Bear guitar, which is Guinness. And currently the baby guitar is upstairs with, with Lari because she's in love with it, but she can't have it. It's my guitar. She's only borrowing it. She does not own that guitar. I bought it. It's, it should be mine. That one's called Kismet. Sitting on a suitcase crying Beneath my feet I feel the rumble Of a subway train yeah. And I laugh out loud Cause it's the one thing I hadn't been trying Ah, oh, the train came in breathless He looked at me restless Said, baby, you'll never change you gotta get caught, gotta get going Hey, the world ain't slowing down No one gets the carnival calling out to you It sounds like a song, it's your like scripture You paint the picture with color, squeeze from your hand Aren't you the kid who just climbed on the merry-go-round Hey look, the world ain't slowing down Now Beth, she's actually classically trained So she's stepping down into the folk world to do that voice But if you're going to sing this with a classical voice I'm not going to sing it with a classical voice Come on, come on I thought she was a diva, but obviously she's not. She's too shy. Out on the sidewalk, pigeons to the moonwalk. Me, I'm dancing like Fred Astaire. All the lampposts are rocking, the whole town's talking like a fool in a barber's chair. And I give the sensation, the joy and frustration, like being caught by a tropical rain. Freedom can numb you Well, there's no place to run to It feels just like no decay Oh, you gotta get going Hey, the world ain't slowing Down for no one It's a carnival calling out Oh, it's calling out to you It sounds like a song Hits you like scripture you paint the picture with colors squeezed from your hand. Aren't you the kid who just climbed on the merry-go-round? Hey, look, the world ain't slowing down. Hey, hey. You packed up all your handbags. You throw it off the sandbags. I let go and you step free. I didn't want to lose you. You said you didn't choose him. It's just how your karma came. But thanks for the vision, the 2020 wisdom. You hit me like a southbound train. Gotta get on, gotta keep going. Hey, the world ain't slowing. It's a carnival calling out It's calling out to you Sounds like a song Hits you like scripture You paint the picture with color Squeeze from your hand Weren't you the kid who just climbed On the merry-go-round Hey look, the world ain't slowing down Hey, hey
it's a big blue world Such a big blue world Cast in a shadow to the moon It helps when you shake it. It's like a vibrato. <laughs> oh, I've never taken that approach on that song. It's <laughs> a great influence on my, on, on my masterpiece. <laughs> now, we could do that in AI. We could say, re, create Ellis Paul's uh, the world ain't slowing down with a classical singer singing it. <laughs> judging, judging, judging. Yeah, that's not going to go, huh? No, no, yeah. She can appreciate the music of my world, and I can't even understand the music in her world. It's, it's beyond me. And she's looking for a teaching position at a university somewhere in the U.S. She's willing to go to Ogden, Utah. She's willing to go to Odessa, Texas. She, you're willing to go to Europe? Sure. Yeah, she's willing to go to Europe. Dan, I don't know if you have any connections while you're over there in the UK that you can pull some strings to get this girl a job. She is fully functioning PhD person. Of course, she has to pass her the big, what do you call that? When the you, defense. The defense. She's got to play defense. She's got to defend her paper what do you call the paper in, at the University of Kentucky? Um, come, we come, call it a dissertation. It's not a dissertation. It's not a dissertation because it's a performance degree, so it's, a, it's just called a doctoral monograph. It's called a doctoral monograph. At the University of Kentucky. Yeah. So other places they may... And they don't even give out a degree. They just give you a little monogram of a monograph. <laughs> it says UKY, and then it has... University of Kentucky has a great basketball team. They do. They do. Yeah. They just lost their coach. Did you know that? No. No, you don't even care. No. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> you're my you're into... at a computer typing for the past six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> About Eric von Lipschwitz from Latvia. <laughs> 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 Don't ever let him see this. He's just, he's only like five miles away uh, at the University of Virginia right now, um, doing what Latvians do when they come to America, probably shopping at all the grocery stores and trying to find chocolate to bring home <laughs> to his people. <laughs> Am I making some bad generalizations? Because you've been to Latvia. Yeah, but yeah. You know, no. It's right next to Estonia, nobody right? Wants to, yeah, nobody wants like to. Like I know, I don't I have no idea. <laughs> Latvia, wait, is it on the Baltic? Yeah, yeah. Look at me. It's beautiful. It's Latvia and then Estonia and then Russia's over here. Well, and Poland is somewhere around there. And between Poland and Latvia, there's a little piece of Russia. Right, that's, that's called like Kaliningrad or something oh. crazy. It's oh, no. yeah. yeah. The, and then Estonia the, is next to it, and then Lithuania is sort of underneath Estonia. Yeah. yeah. All those, listen, all those IA countries are right there. Russia, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. Am I right, IA? Polonia. 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 I think Poland? Polonia. I think, yeah. Polonia? Um, I guess we have dinner cooking upstairs and I'm already late. Um, God, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to do um, the song I wrote with Clarence, but it's been... Clarence, I haven't played this in months. Um, song to say goodbye, I guess it's... A, I could probably bring up the lyrics. I could do that. What's that? Oh, Croatia. There's that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go and make sure I have the lyrics in front of me. A song, and then we'll let you guys go. Thank you for all the love in the tip chart, by the way, guys. A song to say goodbye. Don't forget that I'm actually going to Norway, <laughs> which ends in I, I, A Y, not I A. Unless you're Norwegian. It's Norwegia. Norfeg. Norfeg, really? Yeah, I think so. Wow. She's uh, educated and shit. 
So let's see here. I'm gonna go to the, this and see if I can find the lyrics. Okay, okay, at least we'll get that. Wrote this with Mr. Clarence yesterday. You sent me a song to say goodbye, and now you own the room, and I pour the wine, and in this choir, it's brought you here, and I can't see you, but you're every. A fiddle cries, collides with the night, and I can almost touch you if I could only make this right. The piano calls your name, notes cascading, it washes over me like rain. It's intoxicating a champagne melody with words so clear Reflecting my life to me, asking why I'd ever let you go Maybe the song will go That first night You danced alone In a crowded bar Of whiskey and rhinestone The band played on To cowboys and goats That disappeared The second I held you close to hips a whiskey kiss ah you bit my lip and then the whole night slipped away the piano calls your name notes cascading it washes over me like rain it's intoxicating a champagne so clear, reflecting my life to me, asking why I'd ever let you go. Maybe the song will go. Oh, maybe the song will go. Maybe the song will It's the most optimistic of all chords. It's melancholy but optimistic. <laughs> Bet you they don't teach you that in your PhD program. Yes, they do. Oh, do they really? Yes, absolutely do. In fact, the composer that I do my research on uses a lot of nights. Does he really? I love him already. Part of his style. That's Mr. Eric. Eschewaltz. <laughs> Come on. Eschewaltz. Eschenvolts. 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 Love you guys. Um, I'm going to be in Ireland next week. I don't know how to... I'll figure it out. We'll try and do at least one live stream from Ireland. Um, yeah. It might be in the middle of the day. It might be very late at night for you guys. I'm not sure, but... Um, I'll do one so you can get a taste of Ireland. I'm going to be there with my other sibling, my brother Steve and his wife Kathy, as well as 25 vacationers. 
And if you want to come away with me on a journey somewhere to some foreign country, um, I've got a lot of bucket list moments coming up and we'd love to have you. This is one. Uh, it's a trip to Amsterdam, June 16th to the 23rd. Um, Don Conaseni is going to be on that trip with me, which is going to be very, very fun. June 16th to the 23rd, 2025. Go to fanclubcruises.com. We've already sold about 36 cabins out of the 55 that we have. Um, we could get more if we need them, but um, jump in now so you can start saving up for the trip. It's going to be a lot of fun. Much love to you all. Have a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Good night.